Uh, welcome uh, colleagues. Uh, I am Professor Khaled Khan. I am uh, going to present today something about clinical trial integrity and uh, how the Cairo consensus was formed to generate uh, a statement concerning the integrity. I am based at uh, the University of Granada and today uh, with good luck, I have uh, with me my colleague and friend, Dr. Luciano. So, Luciano, may I ask you to just make a brief presentation about yourself? Thank you, Khalid. It's my honor to be with you now, uh, talking about this very important topic for people like me that we do research, that I do research. My name is Luciano, Dr. Luciano Mignini. I'm a breast cancer specialist, surgeon. Uh, I'm a director of the breast cancer unit of Grupo Oroño and coordinator of the program of breast cancer in the province of Santa Fe, Argentina. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Today we will both cover uh, this uh, material that will appear in my book uh, later on this year in December. But it's already published in uh, these two articles that you see on the screen. Plus, this work is also translated in Spanish, concerning which we have prepared a separate uh, vlog, which uh, you can also see on this channel if your native language is uh, Spanish. To begin with, it's important to understand the hierarchy of evidence and research integrity. What are these concepts? So we know from evidence-based medicine that randomized trials rank at the highest level and below them rank other designs such as cohort studies and uh, case control studies and then uncontrolled observations. And uh, University of Oxford Center for Evidence-Based Medicine put out these levels of hierarchy where systematic reviews and individual trials um, or that use randomization uh, and reviews that use randomized studies rank at the top. With respect to research integrity, the concept of responsible research conduct um, brings together uh, the two ideas of uh, ethics and professional standards. And here we give a little definition of the two concepts. So a clinical trial with integrity will comply with moral values, will have ethics approval, will have uh, course, patient consent. Yes. Yes. And the researchers in the process of conducting the trial will also follow the specific recommendations for good research practice. This is something that it's supposed to be present in all the research, but we found that sometimes we do not follow all these steps. So that is why it is important that uh, uh, we recognize why consensus on trial integrity was needed. Uh, here we see that when trial is completed and the data are analyzed, then trial authors are ready to prepare a manuscript for submission to a journal. It is submitted. The editors may reject it uh, at the first step or it may be rejected by peer reviewers and then it may be resubmitted to other journals. Eventually, a trial that is uh, rejected will be accepted and published. Um, an accepted trial on publication will have what is called the version of record and it will be expected that the version of record has all these features that you see on the screen. The published article is expected to be presented having been conducted in the same way as it was registered publicly. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen all the time. And after publication, when the randomized evidence is used, uh, flaws may be discovered in the evidence 
and this is called post-publication peer review. And through this process, following investigation of potential misconduct, the published trial may ultimately be retracted from the literature. Uh, what is the rate of retraction? This need to be studied subject by subject. And in COVID trials, we know that seven have been retracted. And concerning the problem of research integrity, this Nature article highlights that uh, there are people who are making complaints after publication. But really, the effort need to focus on educating researchers to do the trials well, so that they don't have to be retracted after publication. So with this background, myself, Luciano, other colleagues, we started the Cairo Consensus Initiative. How can we educate researchers to do their trials better? Well, the first step was to register the project, which happened in December 2021. This is something we preach for trials. So we practice it ourselves in our own project. And then the next step after registration was to undertake a systematic review, an umbrella review of existing reviews concerning research integrity in clinical trials. As you can see, Dr. Uh, Mignini was a co-author on this paper with myself and other colleagues. Uh, Luciana, would you like to say some words about this project? Yes, we undertook this umbrella review with some colleagues from Spain, from Egypt, um, from Latin America also, uh, also from uh, Malaysia, England, uh, England, uh, Scotland, Scotland. Mm -hmm. So we are author from different countries, from developing and developed countries, and we went through almost four thousand citations. And after going through all these citations, we get uh, five, fifty-five articles for it to be included in this umbrella review. Thank you. So these fifty-five articles were going to be taken forward to create statements. But for each of these statements, there need to be evaluation by experts. So we convened a panel of 30 experts. And the idea was that the entire uh, research life cycle of the randomized trial should be covered by the expertise of the people invited to the panel, starting all the way from the idea conception the protocol development, uh, conduct of the trial, its publication, but also subsequently to guideline making, systematic reviewing and market access. We had people representing uh, statisticians, uh, trialists, clinicians, but also patient and public representatives, as well as those involved in the market uh, access element. Uh, at the time of uh, delivering proven interventions to, to patients through the health service. Another objective was to ensure that there is geographical coverage. And I'll ask uh, Luciano to say some words about it. Yes, the, um, we meet at Cairo stakeholders from different countries, more than fi uh, 15 countries involved from developed and developing countries. This give us the opportunity to share our background and how the research goes in different scenarios. I was trained in England and I have experience for some research in Latin America, but with this consensus in order to get stakeholders for different countries of the world, make me the opportunity to share our information about integrity of clinical trials. Well, this is what made this uh, project truly international. And this is important because as we have seen in COVID, uh, the vaccine trials have required the need to recruit per trial nearly 25 to 30,000 patients from uh, different countries across different continents. So, having convened uh, the panel 
and undertaken the systematic review, we generated statements on which uh, we obtained uh, the valuation of each of the panel members. The statements came from the literature, but also they came directly from the experts themselves. And to begin with, there were a little over a hundred statements that went through the first Delphi survey. At the end of the Delphi survey, the statements that passed the threshold were then refined and combined where necessary to take them forward to the, to the final round. But those that did not meet the threshold were revisited and put together with new statements provided at the end of the first round by the experts to then run a second round. And the valuation at the second round ultimately then led to uh, around uh, a nine. Uh, around 94 statements being agreed at the final meeting, which were then combined together to produce the final statement, which had 88 recommendations. Uh, Dr. Luciano and myself were both present at this final meeting. So I'll ask Luciano to make some comments about his experience at this meeting. No, it's what I was talking before, the, to have the opportunity to share with colleagues from different parts of the world about how research needs to be done from the beginning, to, from the concept of the trial, you know, and to the end. And this means to present the, 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 the results, where to present, how to present, how to uh, complain with all the quality items. But in, in order to complain to all the quality items, it's not the same the standard that perhaps you can have in some developed countries and in developing countries. So this consensus was very important for us. Well, this challenge uh, was discussed. Uh, and this is what makes uh, this project unique, uh, that it allows for the collaborations to happen between developed and developing mm -hmm. countries and achieving what is required uh, in advancing uh, science in our field. Uh, once completed, the data concerning the various rounds of Delphi were publicly shared. And at the same time, a preprint of the article prepared was publicly shared ahead of its publication, formal publication in a journal. And uh, the publication occurred concerning the consensus as well as the scoping review. Uh, back to back and subsequently the published consensus has been uh, republished in short form and full form in various other journals in English but also in Spanish and uh, in French and we are now looking forward to a version in Chinese as well as another version in Arabic. Now there is a lot of material covered in the work uh, and it appears in the book, uh, Integrity of Randomized Clinical Trials, that will be published in December. The statements cover general aspects, design and approval, conduct and monitoring, publication of both protocol and findings, uh, dealing with post-publication concerns as well as future research. The key thing uh, to summarize here in this video is that uh, ahead of the first patient recruitment, it is important that uh, soon after ethics approval, the trial should be formally publicly registered. And then following the first patient consent and until the end of follow up of the last randomized patient, there should be continuous monitoring and the documentation of this monitoring in a public form. Uh, one of the key aspects here is the statistical analysis planning, which should happen before the data set uh, is locked and that this plan should be publicly shared. And once the, f the data are analyzed and uh, paper prepared for submission to a journal, then at the time of submission, uh, data sharing should also uh, be, it is not at the moment, but it should be in the future, uh, 
the standard part of transparency in the reporting of randomized control trials. Uh, well, with this brief overview of the process and the findings, we would like to bring this presentation to close and I'd like to ask Luciana to make some final comments. No, for, for me, it was a pleasure to participate through this consensus. Uh, as I told before, I think it's a key issue. We need to, to try to do our best in order to do high quality research. And what is more important to integrate this research between developed and developing countries. Well, thank you for highlighting that very, very important point. And I'd like to conclude by requesting you to ask us any questions, to make your comments, and uh, stay connected with the channel because we will give you details of the various uh, steps that we have highlighted here. Soon you will have a video on why an article gets retracted and uh, I hope you will be able to stay engaged as we move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.